to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's video just a reminder some great news the design of experiments for 21st century engineers the mini tab version has just been released. I know for those of you unfortunate enough to have selected Minitab you have a great deal of difficulty in understanding this software so we've created this special version of this text with the Minitab screenshots. The link to lulu.com where you can buy this book is in the description below and of course you also have the option of purchasing Drink Tea and Read the Paper which is the perfect book to go with your Green Belt or Six Sigma Black Belt training. The link to lulu.com for that book is also in the description below. And of course the other thing that we'd really love you to do, please go to buymeacoffee.com and make a small donation. All of these things, the purchase of the books and the donations, they help keep the channel moving. I'm really grateful to all of those people who are currently donating. Many thanks for your support and your help. And now, let's get on with today's video. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen, and the subject of today's video, well, I've got into a little discussion with some people about machine learning and analyzing random data that you're taking out your processes. And I'm saying, well, why don't you do a DOE? And everybody's going, what's a DOE? And why don't you just use high powered software uh, to answer the question? Um, so this is a little video just to talk about what DOE potentially is and how it works differently to just collecting random data. So I'm gonna just look at the idea of, of various variables, inputs, settings to your machine, which are having an effect on a result. So we're just gonna consider a process. So we're gonna go, this is DOE, this is DOE versus, I'm gonna call it random data collection. Okay. You can do this if you want, but what I'm saying is you will get confounding patterns in this and you will get a problem. So we're gonna go DOE versus random data collection. So okay, let's let's consider a process, look. Yeah, so it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, we, we are gonna consider it a machine now because people are talking about machine learning and they think you ought to just use high powered software to just learn from random, randomly collected data sets. So we're gonna make money, okay, and we're gonna play with time, temperature, and pressure. So I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm only gonna, we're only gonna talk about three, three variables, and we're gonna say that coming out of here, let's say whatever you're trying to make, we're trying to hit, let's just say we're trying to hit a hardness value. To be honest, you'd probably be trying to hit other things as well. So it'd be multiple outputs for multiple inputs, but we're just gonna keep it simple. Just to explain to the guys who love this, why this, why, why don't you just use this in your machine learning? You just, you just learn 10 times faster. I don't understand why you wouldn't wanna do this. You know, work smarter, not, not harder. I don't wanna spend a million pound on a piece of software. I just want to put the right data in some cheap, simple software that gets me the answer. So I think now that maybe we'll go, uh, let's have a look. Let's say there's 50 choices on time, 50 choices on temperature, and 50 choices for pressure. So we're just going to put those numbers in just, just to make a point about how you might test and what what machine learning might do, what randomly collected data might do, okay. So look, let's just consider this as a one factor problem, okay, so. So we have time. We can go anywhere from one to 50. 
on a particular setting. And of course, what we want to try and understand is hardness. Now, of course, we can do some tests. We can do a one factor test. Maybe test along this continuum like this. And we get some data. We understand what time does. Okay, it's a while. But look, did you really need all of that data? Why didn't we collect all of that data? You know, we might have tested at all 50 places if we wanted to go really crazy. You know, there's just a model there. If you wanted to create that model, where did we really need to go? Well, to be quite honest, if we'd have gone this end, and we'd have gone this end, then put the line in, yeah, to model what was going on, and then done one test to confirm it at the midpoint, we could have got the same answer with just two tests. This is the point I'm making. We'd set the computer up to do just two tests to generate the model and then test in the middle. The computer would get the answer faster than fast could be. That's just one variable. Now imagine we got temperature, we got pressure. Now we could do the same sort of thing. But what you're doing, just think about this. Very, it's very simple what, what we're saying here. A DOE pattern look is this. We've tested what we would call the low position and the high position for time. We're gonna do the same for temperature and we're gonna do the same for pressure. But if we do it in a special pattern, we'll get the, the answer very, very, fast and here's how you do it time was tested low and high but at the same time temperature was tested low and high, so time, low and high, temperature, low and high. So for these two, look, we've only tested in four places, even though if you multiply these two combinations together, what do you get? Well, if you multiply time with temperature, what you get, of course, is there's 2,500 combinations. I just tested the four extreme combinations, then your powerful software will fill the box with maths. This is the point I'm making. If you go at this randomly, you'll do maybe a thousand of these. Why would you want to do that? When if you test the right four, then let your computer run, it gives you the answer. This is the pattern that you, you collect the data and it makes your, the whole thing work Faster, 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 cheaper, 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 easier. Why wouldn't you use this? Now let's throw pressure in there. And we go backwards like this, look. So now we got these points at the back. So that's pressure. Low and high. So what you've got, look, are these eight points. Now, if I put pressure into the calculation, so what have we got? 50 times 50 times 50. What have I got? This times 50, what's that? It's one, two, five with a naught on the end. One, two, five, one, two. Okay, so look, for these three variables, look, there are 125,000 possible places you could test. Now, I could just let a technician play with that design space. And what they would, they would do is they would just randomly collect data. Um, and I'm assuming, by the way, that they'd go all the way over the design space. There might be areas that they might decide they don't like. So there might be an area that they say, oh no, don't go, don't go there. 
And so there might be areas that they never collect data in, but let's just assume that, you know, they just randomly collect data and then we go all over this design space. How many data points would you like to collect? There's 125,000. What are you going to do? Let him, let him collect 1,000? Let him collect 10,000? Let him collect 20,000? Let him make loads of defects? Let him faff about? You know, why would you spend days and days, weeks and weeks, maybe months and months, collecting all this nonsense when you know what you could do? You could just test the eight corner points. Eight tests out of 125,000. Then you can give that data to Salford, to Minitab, to DOE Pro, to any simple regression software. And the regression that comes out of those eight corner points will be brilliant. Super accurate, works really well. I, I don't understand. You test the best eight points, wouldn't you? There's no other way to do it. You can randomly test, but it's a waste of time and a waste of money. And you don't get good data that gives you good answers. So it's cheaper and it's better. I don't know, which technique would you use? DOE, this is why DOE versus random data collection. DOE is the best, cheaper, faster, make more money, get more optimization, get a faster answer. Use DOE, make more money.